Currently, as I record this, it's mid-spring and plants outside are just exploding. But in this video, there's two plants I want to cover because right now they're both in a choice state for harvest, but that window is not gonna last much longer. Besides these plants being both locally abundant, they can also easily be propagated as part of their harvest. So if you're someone who's interested in wild foods or homesteading, these two plants are definitely worth getting to know. So if you'd like to learn about these plants and their food value, please stay tuned. Burdock has a long history as a cultivated plant for its edible as well as its medicinal properties. In Japan, for example, it's been cultivated for at least a thousand years, and it's still used in many parts of Asia where it's known as gobo. Burdock was introduced to North America when the early settlers planted it as a crop. It was consequently adopted and found very useful by the Native Americans. By today, it has spread across most parts of the world. I was trying to dig as far down as I could without breaking it. And this is what we ended up with. That's, that's a good 13, 14 inches. Burdock roots are perhaps most famous for their enormous size, sometimes reaching a couple feet in length. Choice roots are harvested from first year plants before the plant begins to produce a flower stalk. The reason is, as the flower stalk develops, the roots will go from being tender like a carrot to becoming more and more fibrous. These particular roots that I'm harvesting in this video are right on the edge of waiting too late into the season. Some of the bigger ones are beginning to become just a tad bit fibrous, but that's okay. Because even if some of the roots are too fibrous to chew, they can still serve a purpose, which I'll show you later. Oh, they came up. <laughs> Look at that mama. I don't even know if you guys are getting this in the frame. Look at that, that's gotta be two feet almost. So I really had to lay this down next to the shovel just to give you an idea of its size. But this shovel is probably just over four feet long and laying the tip of the root on the tip of the shovel. The whole plant, including the roots, probably three and a half feet long. Every part of the plant is edible. However, the leaves and stem can become exceedingly bitter and all the more so as the plant matures. And there is a caution that if you decide to eat the leaves, to be 100% sure of its ID, a possible look-alike is feral rhubarb, which leaves have the potential to be deadly toxic. Rhubarb, however, lacks the fuzzy leaves that burdock has, and it has more of a reddish hue that runs down the leaf stem rather than the purple like you'd see on burdock. And of course, burdock has its large barbed seed pods, which are unique to that plant. Burdock contains many nutrients such as iron, magnesium, potassium, phosphorus, chromium, silicon, and that's just to name a few. It's also a good source of carbohydrates, protein, and sugar. To see a full list of its nutritional value, I'll place a link down in the description. Burdock root is also composed of as much as 45% inulin. That's a dietary fiber that helps feed our gut microbes, as well as absorb certain minerals and may even help lower blood sugar for those with type 2 diabetes. 
It also contains a plethora of medicinal constituents which contribute to its many medical uses. Traditionally, the juice of the leaves, stem, or root have been used topically for treating skin conditions such as acne, boils, eczema, and psoriasis. Eating the root is said to help clear out the bloodstream of toxins such as uric acid, and it also helps the body eliminate excess water by acting as a diuretic. Recent studies even suggest that the root may be anti-mutagenic and thus effective against various forms of cancers. Please note that it should be avoided by anyone who is pregnant. And another consideration is that in rare cases, touching the leaves on sensitive skin can cause contact dermatitis with certain individuals. And of course, as with any herbal medicines, you should always consult with your doctor or a certified herbalist before beginning any treatments. Cat's ear is the other plant I wanted to share because it's another underrated food which tends to get a bad rap like dandelion. This time of the year, cat's ear is beginning to shoot up its flower stalk. When harvested right, these flower buds are a tasty little delicacy. This evening, the day began to cool and I found a moment to pick a serving of these. To harvest choice flower buds, you want to find stems that don't have any open flowers yet. You can feel the difference once the stem is too fibrous to pick. In the right condition, the flower stem should feel soft when pinched and will easily snap off a good 6 to 8 inches below the flower bud. If you have the tendency to confuse cat's ear with dandelion, there's a few key differences you can take note of. A comparison of the leaves reveal how dandelion is nearly hairless, while cat's ear is fuzzy on top as well as the underside. Cat's ear, when pinched between your fingers, also resembles a cat's ear. A comparison of the flower stem You'll notice that dandelion is a single flower per stem. The stem is round and a paler green color compared to cat's ear. Cat's ear will often have more than one flower bud per stem and the stem has ridges that run down the length. Also, while both plants produce a hollow stem, a cross-sectional view of cat's ear reveals that it's not a perfect circle. I'm going to first prepare the burdock roots by mixing up a solution of water with added salt and apple cider vinegar. After giving the roots a good wash, I'll peel them and place them in the vinegar water, which is going to help reduce the oxidization and preserve the whitish color of the taproot. It's not necessary to peel the roots, but in some cases it can help improve the flavor. Also guys, a little bit of a garden hack I figured out is to save the crown of the plant when chopping the roots off. By leaving about an inch of the taproot and at least one of the youngest leaves, these can be replanted in the garden where they'll eventually reach maturity and produce seeds for another generation of burdock. The best part is, this method works really well with just about any plant that has a taproot.
Now, remember when I said that the roots can still serve a purpose, even if they're too fibrous? Well, all the leftover roots, which have already been peeled and soaked in the vinegar water, are going into the dehydrator. Once dried, they're powdered in a blender and screened, then stored in a jar as a flower for future use. This flower is a great prebiotic that will help feed your gut microbes. You can add it to your smoothies, sprinkle it over a salad, or make tablets that you can take before a meal. After slicing the burdock roots into little fry-like strips, they'll go into the steamer along with the cat's ear for about 10 minutes. Afterwards, the burdock is removed and lightly fried in some coconut oil For a topping, all you need is a simple vinaigrette of olive oil and balsamic vinegar mixed together and these make a delicious dressing for these two vegetables. Juniper, do you think you want to try some of this? <laughs> First up in our tasting is the cooked cat's ear. Mmm. The texture is really delicate. The flavor is similar to lettuce. And of course you get the butteriness of the olive oil and that tangy hit from the vinegar. You'll know you picked a choice cat's here when it just kind of melts in your mouth. You want to try a piece? You're not used to that. You're not used to vegetables. Okay, up next is the burdock root. So immediately, it's like sunchokes or Jerusalem artichokes. It's like a nutty French fry. It definitely has some crunch and some texture. It's not starchy like a French fry. It's almost like like an almond flavor. They remind me a lot of sunchokes, which makes sense because sunchokes too are mostly <laughs> inulin. Oh yeah, you want to say something too? You want to say something to the people watching? <laughs> I'm hungry and I'm going to finish this plate and I can tell Juniper's getting restless. Come on. Hey guys, if you're still watching this, I just want to tell you personally, thank you very much for watching till the end. By doing so, you're telling the YouTube algorithm that this channel is worth other people's attention. I appreciate everyone's support. Please hit the like button and share this video with someone who you think may appreciate it. And let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and till next time, happy foraging.